I challenge you to a game of pool for one unit at Eleanor's fittings at 20% additional discount. Or, or if I lose, I'll pay you full retail. Perfect. That's never, a deal. I never pay full <laughs> retail. I've had a call from Chairman Industries. Um, they're the importers of all the wheel, well, most of the wheel, uh, wheelchairs in South Africa. They distribute and supply. Um, they set it up for you, all of those things. So they came and measured me about five weeks ago uh, to get proper body measurements to be able to order a custom wheelchair for me. Uh, the reason you want to do that is to be as comfortable as possible and not to get any sores. Um, oh, that's just a bit of background. Uh, so the fact is, I'm on my way now to get my wheelchair. I'm going to Joburg um, to, to fit it and, and fit for a cushion and everything like that. Um, so I'm quite excited about that because I, I'm getting quite a lot of body pain and I don't know if that's cushion related or chair related or posture related. I'm not really sure what causes it, but I, I do have a lot of body pain. So hopefully the chair and the new cushion fixes all of that. Um, yeah, so I've been waiting, it's about six weeks since I've ordered the chair. It's now basically, I think today, or actually tomorrow, is six months, seven months, seven months from the accident. So uh, yeah, it's been, it's been a bit of a journey. It's not, it's not that long yet, but um, for me, it's, it feels like a lifetime. Um, so if you've, if you've recently only started watching our content uh, on the Big Pond YouTube page or maybe on Facebook or whatever and, and you've seen I'm in a wheelchair, uh, maybe you haven't seen the previous videos where I've explained what happened and the whole accident and everything. So I'm going to give you a bit of a recap. Uh, so it was last year, November. Uh, me and two friends were doing a motorcycle trip. I, I, I love motorcycle riding. I still do. If I, if I would be able to ride again, I will surely do that. Um, so we were on a motorcycle trip from George. Uh, we were heading back. We were going to Naisna, Bavianskloof, from Bavianskloof out to Willowmore, to Jeffries. We were planning a five-day bike trip. Um, yeah, and it was on day one, uh, we, were, we were on the, they call it the Coast to Karoo route. Uh, it is between Naisna and Uniondale. And we were still taking videos. Uh, we'll share some of that videos of the morning's ride. And it was maybe 30 kilometers in. I was busy adjusting my GPS or something. Uh, lost concentration for only a moment when i looked back up i was on a corner on a dirt road and with with, with a big drop in front of me um yeah so without any decision making time i just went off the drop and um, that's the last thing i could remember and then i remembered waking up a couple of minutes later maybe five to ten minutes later just seeing treetops uh, above me lying on my back couldn't really move I didn't know why I couldn't move I did not know it was something lying on top of me uh, was I pinned down was I wedged in uh, I didn't know what was going on but uh, I knew I knew I was in trouble and I knew that uh, something was going to change from there on um, so I was in and out of consciousness while lying there um, and luckily, uh, my one friend, Martin, who was my best friend, uh, who still is, um, he, he, he stopped again to take another video and he realized that, that I wasn't passing. And our other friend, Renir, he, he, he was passed already. He was heading towards Uniondale. We said we were not stopping again. So uh, maybe luck, as you call it, uh, made him stop. and and look for me um, because if he didn't stop there I don't know if they would have ever found me because 
it's such a, a big big vast area that we covered that day that we would have covered that day um, so yeah maybe maybe it's luck maybe it's I don't know some divine power but uh, so so he, he felt he, he should stop and take a video uh, then he, he started he, he realized I was not there so he backtracked and he went to the place where, where where I last took the video so he knew it was somewhere in between where he stopped and where I previously stopped and he was riding up and down there and he just saw a little skid mark in the road um, and as he stopped there I heard I heard a motorcycle stopping there and uh, I felt like one of those moments where you, you want to scream and you, and you can't get anything out or you want to run and you can't run um, so it was one of those moments so I just yelled as hard as possible uh, and he, he heard me he thought it was a cow or something in the bush that fell but then he, he saw my white motorcycle boots then he saw the bike uh, then he came down he, he, he came towards me and he actually stumbled he left his helmet and motorbike in the road and as as he was coming down he stumbled on the incline and uh, he rolled and he ended not too far from me but he was fine at least um, so he was talking to me and, and uh, asking me about the pain and everything so then he went back up back up to the road because we didn't have any sig signal so he went to get signal to phone for help came back uh, then it was probably another 15 minutes before the ambulance arrived where, where after they there was about 10 or 12 people that were they put me in a stretcher and they were moving me up the mountainside uh, to the ambulance uh, where after we went to Naisna where they did a couple of scans and checks and saw that I was badly injured um, and they from from there they took me to Medi Clinic George uh, that's where most of most of the other scans were done and to, to determine the, the damage basically I was in immense, immense amount of pain at that stage um, I had a broken chest bone broken collarbone four broken ribs and about four broken uh, vertebrae in my back so yeah it was at that moment that that they told me that same day listen you're not gonna not going to be able to walk again if you, you're going to be a paraplegic um, at that stage I was under the influence of a lot of medication uh, so I, I, I think that only sunk in about two weeks later um, yeah and that's that's where my life changed uh, I was in in that hospital for two weeks then I came to a rehab center here in Pretoria Milmed for six weeks and uh, I regained some strength. I was able to to learn new skills about about my body and how does it work now on and um, things to do and not to do. So yeah, I, I just see it as a as a guideline. Uh, the people are very pessimistic. The doctors and rehab specialists. I think they want to they they're trying to basically control your expectations. Um, but I have to say I have quite big expectations. I, I do feel inspired uh, maybe to be an example for someone or maybe to be an example for the industry. Um, be it by a miracle, be it by technology, be it by an operation. I, I do believe that this is, not, this is not the way I was meant to be. This is not the way I am meant to be or, or don't have to be like this. Uh, so whichever way I'm, I'm searching for for answers and options um, in the meanwhile I'm getting a wheelchair um, we, we renovated a house for me that is accessible for me and my wife one level um, so in the meantime life life keeps on going but um, I don't believe this this is how I'm gonna stay uh, I I don't want to face the facts that that this is permanent and, and I don't think that it is a fact. Um, 
so yeah that is that is basically the story of of me being in a wheelchair so it's only been six seven months um, I am coping very well I am healthy I'm in good shape um, but I don't think it will stop here we, we're constantly looking for solutions uh, looking for ways out and I'm confident that we will find it um, if you think of the the rate of improvement of uh, medical medical advancements and uh, technological advancements if you if you look what uh, what they have been able to accomplish in the last 10 years um, and it's it's an exponential growth so that will only keep on growing at a faster rate that the rate of improvement is becoming more and more so I do believe I will maybe be one of the the, the trendsetters in, in, in this field. I, I strongly believe that. Um, we are busy talking to doctors. They, they are busy doing experimental operations. Um, and I will keep on pushing to find something, to find a cure um, for paralysis. I think that is a, a major need. It affects so many people in this world. Um, and it's currently untreated so um, yes uh, that is that is basically the story um, now you are updated and you should you should know why I'm in a wheelchair from this on from now on all right thanks for listening to my story Spray paint the houses, um, especially on brick and rough surfaces like that. Spray paint actually makes a lot more sense. Now, this is not a spray painter with a compressor. It's called airless spray paint uh, or airless spray gun. Um, it actually uses electricity and then there's a long wire. Is it down here? Yeah, come and have a look. It's uh, not a wire. Fine. So from the spray gun itself, there's a pipe going into the paint which is turned out a bit by water and that way we literally spray paint onto the houses without using a compressor. Now we are busy experimenting with it a bit to try and see if we can um, uh, spray on the inside as well. We haven't found great success with that yet but at this stage spray painting on the outside and the roof of the house works really well. While we are here let me show you some of the progress for this week. Um, you would have also seen or, or you will be seen inside the house. A lot of the ceilings are done, a lot of them already painted like that black contrast color. Um, most of the plumbing and electricity is basically done. So a lot of boring stuff that's not as exciting to show. Um, but yeah, a lot of that going in. Uh, all the walls are done with plaster and, and finishing and, and so on. Today we started uh, tiling. And yeah, I think that's basically it. Now, we have a meeting minus six minutes ago, so let's go there. So, um, Charmaine, as I told you quickly, we are doing a full-time YouTube show these days. And so, Michelle follows us around and shows people what we are doing and how, it, how our business works, basically. Um, the reason I'm picking up... Um, Oh no, no, everybody's fine. Yeah. Um, so the reason uh, I'm picking Charmaine up instead of meeting her at the house is that her car is in for a service. But we really wanted to see this property as soon as possible. So I said, I'll come and pick you up, whatever is necessary. It's just uh, go and see the property quickly. So, um, so yeah, in theory, uh, that's why we're picking them up. And we'll go and have a look at the property now and, and walk through there. and make a decision on whether to make an offer on it or not.
Ja. Yes. Yes. Ja. Yes. Mm -hmm. The one that was bought by one of the guys, by Aron or whatever. Yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. And then that, that smaller one is the second option. Yeah. The one with this, this one that the Bojo is holding up. I'm not sure if it's the Bojo, but that one, yeah. it's it's um it's a cottage style. So it's a bit bit of a different style. Right. Okay. So maybe. Um, yeah, the one thing that I'm um, thinking now is that if we center it, there will probably not be a space for a um, for a, a mirror on the wall. Yeah, I, I'm saying there will probably not be space for a mirror, right? Johannes, how are you? Yes, how are you? Good, good. Yes. I want to ask you something. I've got two yes. lapas, right? Yes. You know most what a lapa is. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. So I've got two at both those sites where I'm working currently. Um, yes. I want to demolish them. But yes. a guy I know, he said he wants to... Uh, he, he wants to move them because he's got horses, so he wants to use yes. it for his for his horses, the the old lapas yes. and the poles and so on. So, yes. so he said, but he, he doesn't know how to move them and he doesn't have a truck and you know it doesn't work. So, what I want to ask you is, I want you to come and see those uh, lapas and tell me how much you will charge me to um, dig it out. We cannot just break those legs off because uh, that will break the pole in half. So we must dig you out, the, we must dig them out. So it's almost like tree felling. Yes. The, uh, to dig up those legs of the lapa and then put them on a truck and, yes. and demolish the entire uh, lapa and then move it to Moikluf. This guy stays in Moikluf. So what about the grass? We, 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 we demolish them or? No, we take it along to him. How will how we take a little bit, a little bit, we, we, we take and take, we, we, we remove the whole uh, roof or? Yes, we remove everything. I don't want anything left there. Um, and, and I mean, I mean the grass, do we, 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 we must take the whole roof or we must put the whole roof or we must take the grass or we must put? I, I think we must take the grass off 111 because it will not work to, one, one. Um, it will not work to, to take the whole roof at All once. Right. I'm not sure, maybe okay. it will, but I don't think. We mustn't break the stuff, that's the important part, uh, the, the, the gum poles. Um, okay. And I'm not when sure, maybe we can find out what he says. Uh, maybe he doesn't care for the grass, then you can uh, take the grass to, to throw away. Can you can you dump okay. uh, can you dump that type of grass there by uh, Menlo Park? Uh, mostly they don't want, they want Mamidoti. Yeah. But you're gonna speak with them, so we're gonna okay. we're gonna make a quotation for my video, yeah? Yeah, that's fine. I want the quote to do that. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna tell that guy if he wants the lapas like that, he must uh, he must pay the cost for you to do that. If he then he okay. must pay you and um, and then I'm gonna not uh, be involved in that. But that way I will get free rubble removal of those uh, 
laugh us um, you will get a job and he will get some gun poles for cheap just for the okay, cost of okay. moving it so so if okay. you can go and check for me um, I will send you both addresses it's in Gartfontein yeah. both of those houses so maybe go and check at the one side it's Aaron and at the one other side it's power so you know both those guys they can show you the lapas okay all right I will send you a picture uh, 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 the address can you go and check for okay. for me today and then send me a quotation yes I'm gonna go today and uh, send you the quotation okay perfect okay. thank you Johannes okay, okay. Bye, -bye. You. bye bye so a lot of times um, with these older houses there's a lot of things that are useful and valuable so for instance like the LARPAs um, I, don't, I don't think there's an English word for a LARPA like a little thatch building whatever it's called <laughs> but in theory these um, these these a lot of valuable things so stoves um, LARPAs uh, swimming pools swimming pool equipment so like pumps and, and stuff there's a lot of things that has value um, but that we don't plan on using so those things we either sell off or if they're not valuable as in like these LARPAs they're not Nobody really wants to pay me money for them, but there are people who would like to use them. So I made a deal with him just, just remove it. Um, his wife actually runs a, a school for like a, 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 what do you call it? Like a, a, she saves horses that that actually plans on getting slaughtered. So it's actually a, um, a, a, a good cause that she runs, like a almost like a charity or a. a rescue for, for horses so um, like with this guy I said if you just pay the cost of moving these things you can have the the lapas for free um, so in theory uh, yeah just wanted to give some insight that's what we do mostly when when these valuables a lot of the stuff second-hand stoves and so on we sell them even baths toilets all of those types of things we sell them as well there are definitely value in those things um, to go with so y'all So yesterday I went to have a look at a house in Garfontein, you know we, you know the primary school? Yeah, uh, Garfontein primary. Yeah, there's a, there's, I think the street is Zita. Yes. Um, one street basically up uh, to the east is Ronald, in yes. Ronald Street. Uh, I, I, I looked at a property there. I think that area is actually quite good. It's almost, it's better than... Yeah, the surrounding houses are a bit bit better condition than um, extension six and extension five yeah um so the house is not great though and especially like the layout you can see that a lot of like places have been added on and on and on to it uh 175 five bedrooms but there's like a, on, the, on the side there's a, a garage that um that it's built on yeah built on afterwards has a flat roof um if you look on one of these pictures you'll probably be able to see it but but in in theory there's a, a that one the and uh, no, it yeah 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 you see it's it's got a yeah. little lip yeah. <laughs> of tiles but it's actually a flat roof and it's tandem so it's long and then it so it's a long tandem garage and then it goes around the corner <laughs> so you can't drive in there but like a little workshop and out of this thing there's an entrance almost into the main bedroom of the house or the old main bedroom and there's also an entrance into a staff quarters so it's like all little yeah. all these little corners and then on top is what used to be like a pajama lounge and a big main bedroom but a part of it's drywall so there's two bedrooms and one bath upstairs and then there's two full two normal bedrooms downstairs no three normal well two normal bedrooms like a smaller room but with built-in cupboard so that could be a bedroom as well two bathrooms downstairs 
and you can see a space that's been uh, opened up that used to be a bedroom as well that's also got the space where like it's like a little mm. where the cupboards used to is be is there a room with an ensuite at the bottom no no. Okay, so there's no it's actually not a, no main bedroom for. I the think they converted this when they did the upstairs, um, and like put the stairway in in this space, because I also thought immediately could it be a flat lit with a three bedroom house, a proper three bedroom house at the bottom, and I think the short answer is no. It's probably not that. Um, it's going to take too much change, too much renovation. Then yes, and structurally it's going to cost too much. Nice big pool on the outside, um, but but not great entertainment space. You know, not no. There's a little bry area there in the corner, but it's not great. <laughs> it's like a lot of the kitchen is oldish and and not salvageable. See, that's the one room you can see. It used to be a room like this um, uh, fireplace that walks out to this bry area on the left, pool on the right. That's a, a built-in, so the kitchen is through here. You see, that's that third bedroom, yeah. the fourth bedroom, actually. Um, so there's a lot of space. It's like 240 squares, which I think is good in theory. There we go. Um, but so if you have a look here now, so there's stairs going up over here. On the outside. Corner here, <laughs> into that space. There's a lot no of... No inside stairs. No, there are inside stairs as well. <laughs> That's okay, what I'm saying. That's, There's that's so good. many weird corners to it. And I think, in essence, you remember at, uh, what was it, Myra Street, we broke down that flat. And I think this is the mentality that we need on this house as well. Kind of saying, okay, let's take a few things away and get it. But but it's a full-on renovation. There's no way we're keeping Bathrooms, this and that. Kitchen, the one bathroom is kind of done, but it's in a weird position so it will probably we might score like a toilet okay, so or two let's let's think about the layout as, a, see, a, a, as a principle a decent toilet and shower and whatever so they, there's two bedrooms downstairs my think yeah layout my thinking would be main bedroom like a massive main bedroom upstairs with a walk-in wardrobe with a ensuite and even like lounge. a little and even a little lounge area yeah um okay and it will be a weird house because most parents don't want to be upstairs, kids downstairs type yeah. of things. That Maybe. is something to think about, but there but it, are but there some people a who, who do live like that, who do, who Where it's okay. they, they do it like that. Um, they have, even if it's a separate floor, they have a main bedroom with an ensuite. Yeah. Then there's the kitchen and dining area, and then the other rooms on the other side. So it is an acceptable concept. Um, uh, it's, it's not for the 80%, it's maybe for the for the 40% yes. or so of the market. It, it, ex you, you see there's typically that's the area coming in underneath the stairs into the house from yeah. the, that garage area. Um, yeah, but the only thing is that needs to be utilized as a small cabinet or something. Yeah. Um, and we need to yeah, drive all it off or whatever and then or it build it closed. makes sense. But, but that's the thing. I think for that to be sensible on this property or, or for this property to be sensible for us, we need to buy it for much less. And it's one of those simple things. The price is not right, it's probably not What good. What would the one, selling, selling price be one, after renovation be? Yeah, it's probably a 2.5 2 million rand house. Is it a 1.7, uh, they're marketing for 1.75, I don't think it's worth that. I think it's probably worth 1450 maybe 14 to someone buying to to, to for a normal us flipping for us flipping one two yeah because i think we can sell for 2.5 but it's it's not a small renovation it's a full on probably a almost a million bucks eight eight hundred thousand yeah. or something then, like yeah. that so we'd be in for it two must million. be it must be eight hundred and one million it's not a sensible deal yes um yeah i think in theory okay uh well let's say let's say we do make an offer we send them an offer next thing is if not for us is that not an option for mike with the tandem garage and it could the definitely work for mike i i thought of mike immediately for it as well um i'm thinking 
they probably won't be accepting our offer in any ways. Yeah, that's that's very possible. So we have a we have a couple of things that we do when we look at properties. Firstly, we have a couple of of jobs for a property. We either want to use them for flats, or we want to flip them, or we want to maybe Eni's looking for another property. I bought a property recently, so he's also looking for another property. Um, so there's a few options which we look at when we're looking at a property. After those three criteria are done for it's our It's not an investment, sake, not yes. a flip, not a in personal a keep, investment, yes. keep, whatever. Then we have a bunch of other avenues that we look at. We have people that we know that are looking for houses. We have real estate friends that, that yeah. can help market a house. This is currently at an agent. This so is a, when we find agent, it so we privately, we'll typically give it yes. to a real estate agent, possibly. But um, at this stage... Probably Mike is a good idea. Yeah, I think so. So first things first, we, we put in an offer, mm. see what happens there. If not, uh, we send it through to Mike and see if I, he wants to do something. I, I think good terms to these guys might be sensible as well or might be a, a, a benefit for them as well and maybe convince them towards the um, acceptance side. Um, uh, maybe give them really good occupational rent maybe give them uh what's the other thing um uh, the electrical certificates, certificates yeah. we can probably get done uh, for th on their behalf you know so make plans. it easy huh? plans is the other problem if you they say you they say are built on they say there are plans for everything as it is at the moment yeah but I, well then we I'd can like rather put it in as a clause because yes you said it is a built on and it, it feels really on. built on make sure these proper approved plans for everything um the, the the one garage is actually built right onto the neighbor's wall as well so i'm thinking yes no you don't want to pay for 240 squares or whatever that's not on plan yeah because because essentially you only have the squares what the hell There might be a military invasion at the moment, but we'll make an offer. <laughs> yeah. um, I've, I, I, I've, I, given the military invasion, let's take another 100,000 off of it. Um, other than that, um, I'll, I'll get that offer to them in writing this morning. Right. Um, what do you think um, at the building sites? Uh, you're leaving when? 12? Yeah, today 12. Um, but I've spoken to Duplessis on the one side. They're pushing with the building there of the garage wall, the mm -hmm. internal one yes. dividing the kitchen and the bathroom. Are oh, the bricks there? Yes. Delivered. Well, okay. I think so. It's ordered. Or, no, ordered nothing, nothing happens more than okay. that. It's ordered. Um, they're building the outside wall with the window uh, in, in the space of the garage door. Mm -hmm. And the rest, the if they are finished with that, which they won't be, mm -hmm. they can start plastering Tomo tomorrow. They can, yeah. yeah. Do we have plaster sand on that side? Yes. And, and I saw the uh, cement was delivered. Yes. I saw that. I didn't see this morning uh, the bricks, but it's... They asked for some concrete and so on. Uh, for, for foundations. I assume so, yes. They're probably going to do foundations today in any ways. Um, it won't be a building of that wall. Are we, that wall, can we just build straight onto the Yeah, there's a slab floor? there. They were. Or they wanted to do foundations this morning. Maybe we should just give them a call and yeah, make sure that yeah, they no, don't do because it's not necessary. In, yeah. This morning they said we're digging foundations. I said that's fine, but now that you're saying that, yes, but it, it's on it, the floor. It, it, it that's depends solid. if there's a if there's a slab there, it will be fine. If there is paving going into the garage, it's not fine. Mm. But there should be a slab there. Okay. Okay. I'll just sort that that out. Okay, let's check that and um, uh, Thelma Street, they, they're also busy the with plaster patches. We did the total through yesterday with yeah, I think, everything they need. Um, I don't know it's about most of it. Um, yeah. I think everything's sorted. Yeah. They, they're busy enough. They, they're building that braai. Um, I think at, at, at Ilanor, you can also start removing paving. Um, uh, if guys don't have a job. Yeah, but that will that just side. make it more difficult for us and it will make it more messy. I, I, I mean, not in front, in the back. At the back, yeah. The yeah, yeah, they can do that. Um, and we then we just get a quote from Johannes for that thatch. I, I already did that 
this morning as well. Okay. Um, I think we need to um, also try to see where we can rent a bobcat from. Yeah. And I'll then phone around, uh, see if I can get that. Maybe while you're on the road, just uh, make a couple of calls. For Wednesday. Um, Tuesday, Tuesday or Wednesday. I thought Tuesday if we can. And then um, the other thing I thought of was there was something else on the. Um, a few moments late. Oh, payments. You're gonna make payments when yeah, you get there. Yeah, I, I asked the B to to send them through all the sites. Then I'll do them tonight or all this the afternoon. Sometime before the wedding. <laughs> yeah, it's tomorrow. The wedding so it's fine. Okay. Um, yeah, all the all the wages. Um, okay, awesome. So it's Friday afternoon again, uh, end of week four, and today we are at Crucible in Gaasfontein. If you haven't heard the name yet, that's quite possible. Uh, it's a brand new bar, it's a pool bar, and apparently a non-dodgy pool bar. It actually looks nice and clean, and not the typical what we know in Pretoria as a pool bar. Uh, so it's quite nice. We came through today, they actually have a very nice variety of beer. I'm drinking a Weiss beer from Eddie Erdinger, uh, which is nice in terms of variety. Not lots of places in Pretoria have that big of a variety on beers. So quite a nice little local spot. Um, it's also, um, you will see right next to me, this is not Leroux. Uh, this is Diewald from Thailand. Um, Leroux actually went to a wedding and he already left at about 11 this morning. So I said to Devil it will be really sad of me just to sit in a bar by my own and have a drink for a Friday afternoon. And um, I invited him to come through for a Friday afternoon beer tasting. How is that adding er a Devil? Is it cold? It's good. Cold. Even good. though I was the the last option, I converted <laughs> you into a vice beer for the fan for, for the beer tasting. Uh, Devil. Is actually close by. He walked over because his shop is also just underneath these guys. Devil, I'm not sure how you guys will be productive on Friday afternoons with a bar, and there's actually a whiskey tasting bar opening on the other side. So, all of them just above your shop here in Gaasfontein. Yes. So, guys, uh, yeah, don't get your orders to him on a Friday afternoon. Do it on a Monday morning. Um, Diewald uh, has been with us uh, on, he was with us on Monday morning at yes. the sites, right? Uh, was it last week? Was it this week? It was this week, yeah? Yes. Monday. He was with us this week. Um, as you would have seen on the building sites, quite a lot of boring stuff still happening. Uh, a lot of uh, chasing and, and so on for plumbing, for electrical. So a lot of, uh, a lot of plaster and building, a lot of boring stuff happening. Um, I now, I've said this now for a few videos. Um, and for the guys that's here for the interior design and the nice uh, looking uh, furnishings and so on, um, we're getting there. On both these sites, we'll have more details really soon and more nice stuff to see. This week, we did not visit a previous house. Uh, I think I'll show you LaRue's house with all the furniture and a proper walkthrough. We saw a bunch of comments saying we didn't quite see what LaRue's house looks like. I think I'll go and show you guys next week exactly what it looks like. Yeah. All the finishes with his furniture and they basically settled in after the move, move so it will be nice. Yeah. Um, as a substitution for not showing you nice interiors, I asked Devil also to join me and just show us and you guys these uh, matte black taps that we're getting in uh, for both the current projects. Uh, we struggled really uh, quite a lot to find a nice black tap that's not a million bucks. It looks like a million bucks, but it doesn't cost a million yes. bucks. Value for money indeed. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so so the, the tap the tap that I brought in the range that I usually sell to Big Pond at the moment, which is actually enhances the look of uh, the, the, the flip houses they do, is uh, the magnetite range from McNeil. 
Um, as you can see, it's got a nice Triumph. matte black. This is, it's actually the Magnetite Triumph, part of the Triumph range yes. um, from, from McNeil. It, uh, it comes with a 12-year guarantee, SABS approved. Nice matte black finish. Um, and it's very durable. There's, it comes in, the, this style or design comes in chrome as well. But uh, in terms of what's really trending at the moment is black finishes, black, uh, matte black finishes, yeah. bathroom accessories, as well as shower doors. So yes, this is what the tap looks like, and this is what we're going to be putting into into both the Elma Levels House as well as as, as well as, as Eleanor number Eleanor two. Number two. Yes. So um, these taps are available at most plumbing shops, but uh, some of them actually charge me double, or quoted me double what Devolt is charging me. So if you want them, tar links the way to go. He's not paying me yet. <laughs> He's funny soon to, to give him uh, these announcements. Um, Thank you. Endorsements. Yes. So, um, yeah, uh, is that everything? Yeah. Then just a couple of announcements. Um, I think on the previous video and as well as on this one, our sound is better. Let us know if there's any other changes that you want uh, in the video. Stuff that you realize that would be nice. Uh, what do we, you want us to show you um, more of? Uh, then second, last night we were at an at a event by Micah, so we get a lot of our stuff from Micah, um, the stuff that Devil does not supply us, uh, that's typically sand and cement and those types of things, and we were at a client's event that Micah held, and three of the people came over to us and greeted us and say, we feel like we know you already because we watch your videos. Oh, that's and what cool. I want to say is, if you are watching the videos and you, and you see us in public, Feel free to come over and greet us and have a chat to us. We really like engaging with people uh, who watch the video specifically. Um, yeah, so we, we would really love for you to come over and have a chat to us. Um, the other thing is we're still looking for a bucky. Uh, we told you on week three's video about that. We're looking for a small little delivery vehicle. Um, so uh, Bantam, Nissan MP200, maybe a Hyundai H100, those small little trucks. Or, yeah, that makes two flexible. of us. I'm also looking for one. Okay. So, so, please. Car dealers, <laughs> we're a bunch of people looking for buckies. Please let us know. Yes. Number two, um, furniture staging. Oh, we're now cool. almost at a place with Levels House. Now, if you have been watching and following us for a while, you would have seen that on the Una Street House we did staging and on a few other roads as well. Um, if you are a furniture supplier, so the pool balls are going crazy. <laughs> Um, if you are a, it's a pool hall after all, they're probably allowed to play pool. Um, if you have a furniture company, or you know a furniture company, tag them in the comments of this. But in theory, uh, we are looking for partnerships and people to, to uh, collab with us to stage a property. What we will basically do is we'll offer you and your clients a lot of access. So you can almost use it like a showroom. That's what we previously did with previous suppliers. And basically we need to furnish a house because a house just looks and displays that much better when it when is it's furnished. furnished. Exactly. Agreed. So we, we push for furniture and we've already probably got a, a table supplier again. Uh, yeah, I won't say his name straight away, but uh, just to get him committed 100%, but you know who you are. <laughs> uh, speak to us, let us know if you're ready for furniture in the houses. And that's it. Um, so it's Friday afternoon, we're in a pool. Dear Vault, what do you say? I challenge you to a game of pool for, what should we make it? Let's do, you give me an additional 20% off on all my taps and fixtures for Thelma Street. <laughs> One game only, not best of three of any of those nonsense. I've never played Dear Vault with pool. I haven't played pool in like three years. No. So Leroux, I'm sorry. There's two of us. I'm sorry for putting it on the, all of, all of it on the table. <laughs> Let's not, literally. Make it, let's not make it yeah, literally on the table. Let's not make it as big of a challenge. Devolt, let's ch uh, challenge you for one unit at Eleanor's fittings. Yes. So that's a full on, it's like a full house's fittings. Wow. A 20% additional discount. Or, or if I lose, I'll pay you full retail. Perfect. That's never, a deal. I never pay full that, retail. That's a deal. So, and he's being recorded. So, so everyone can, knows, I've got witnesses. Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, great. 
So we're going to head into that. I've got another meeting at three, so we need to push this through now. But we're going to we're going to play a game. Marcel, you're going to have a look and see who wins and show them who wins. And then we'll go from there. Yes. Perfect. Thank you, guys. That's end of week Thanks four. Thanks for tuning in. Cheers, Eni. Cheers. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs>